G'day viewers, my name is Graham Stevenson and I'd like to invite you to come on a journey of creativity and learning and adventure through the series Colour in Your Life. There's an artist in every family throughout the world and lots of times there's an artist deep down inside all of us as well. So grab your kids, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, uncles and mums and dads and come and see how some of the best artists do what they do. Okay guys, well we are in Christchurch in New Zealand and we are with a very distinguished gentleman today, Mr Don Makara. Thank nice you to very, meet you, very much for being on the show. Uh, Don's had an extensive history of being an educator before he became an artist and was a drama teacher, mm -hmm. art teacher, social studies and English mm -hmm. for a number of years and um, you know, just done some amazing things which we'll discuss today. But in 1987, after many years of wanting to be an artist, you actually made the decision to say, this is what I need to do with my life. Mm. Tell, me, tell me about that decision and, and how it has affected you. Well, it was uh, something I had, as you say, been wanting to do for a long, long time. And I, I had been fitting bits of art in to my drama and uh, to my classroom teaching and so on. But mm -hmm. 1987, yes, it, it just became a crunch. Uh, I'd had a hip replacement, my mm -hmm. mother had died. Uh, I thought, well, okay, um, I'm not immortal too, so mm -hmm. I will take up what I've always been wanting to do. Fantastic. And, and in that period of time, you've traveled the world pretty extensively as well, and then painted a lot of, probably the things that you used to teach in social studies were the things that you sought out in the end as far as your work was concerned. Pretty yeah. amazing stuff. Yes, I, I think uh, I was drawn to the classical uh, parts of, of Europe, mm -hmm. uh, to uh, particularly to where my father was killed in the, in the battle for Crete. Oh, wow. uh, so I went to Greece for mm -hmm. that reason uh, as well, uh, and also to Italy, uh, and I had the pleasure of being, learning a little bit of Italian before I actually went there too, so I found that very handy. Fantastic. Uh, and then my wife, uh, Jill, has been uh, learning uh, Spanish for some years and so we've gone there and painted there as well. Also mm -hmm. to France and also particularly to Ireland and the UK generally. Well and speaking of the UK, um, you were in Newcastle on Tyne mm. for, for some time as well, uh, actually did a university course there. Yes I did, I had the, the privilege of doing a marvellous uh, drama course, drama and education yes. with a a, a, a guru of that sort of work uh, called Dorothy Hefkett. Yes. And that was a marvellous year. But during that year as well, uh, I was able to go around various galleries uh, in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I had this sort of battle on my hands as to whether I was going to be driving to do for the rest of my life to do the drama and education, yeah. which, I th which I did practice for a few years. Yes. Uh, but also then to to, uh, to follow up my uh, my visits to the, the, the main galleries in London, for example, uh, and even Newcastle upon Tyne had a good gallery as well. Yes, mm. well I think you've made the, the right decision because the piece that we're actually working on today mm. is uh, is one that you nearly, nearly got in trouble for, for actually taking, <laughs> you're up on a railway staunch and I think it was. Oh uh, yes. So, yes. so what is the building that we're painting today and what is the town? Well the town is actually just 14 miles south of Newcastle upon Tyne. Mm -hmm. Uh, and during that, that year, uh, on a couple of occasions, I did get down to do some sketching beside the River Wear, mm -hmm. um, just at the foot of the great cathedral there. Uh, and this, this cathedral uh, and the, a view over the, towards it, over the town, mm -hmm. uh, is a very famous one. Um, that's best seen from the inside of a railway carriage yes. crossing a, a viaduct. Yes. Uh, and um, various famous people have commented and say, this is one of the great views of Europe, you, you must never miss it. Yeah, well we're, go we're going to paint that today. Well, that's what we're going to try and paint. Absolutely, yes. and then right. we'll discuss that more as we go along. But uh, very, very interesting man with a wonderful history of, of life, uh, which we'll discuss today as well. But I'm going to step out of shot and I'm going to let you start on this wonderful piece. Thank you very much.
All right, Don, well, we've got three stages, and this is the first one of uh, what we're going to go through, but you're doing some pencil work. Tell me more about that. Yes, well, the pencil work is uh, just, just gives the layout, of course, for the, the whole painting, and I work it out, pr the proportions out, by placing certain things ar around first, like the, the, the tower and the cathedral, uh, the town hall tower. And once I've got those in, then it's only a matter of filling in the gaps between. That's how I do the painting, the, do the drawing. Yeah, and the drawing is such an essential part as well, mm. isn't it? Yeah. For this sort of work it is. Okay, and um, what sort of watercolour pipe are you using there? Uh, I'm using, um, this This is a Saunders, uh, uh, not surface, mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it, it's, it, it'll take the detail. Uh, a rough surface wouldn't take the detail that I'm aiming for in this particular work. Okay. I'm happy enough with the drawing now, so I think I can go to the next stage and that is to start putting in the first main washers. In order to get the main washers flowing properly, I'll have to decrease the angle on the paper. So all I've got to do is raise this old drawing table like that, stamp on it hard, and it's ready to start putting on some of the first washers. Okay, so what I'm doing now is wetting part of the, uh, of the paper so that I can make sure that the the water will flow, um, uh, the, the, that is the colour will flow in the way I want it to flow. Just a little bit more of an angle on it there. Um, wetting that first, coming right down to the top of the cathedral. I'm leaving the clouds in the meantime because I'll do the clouds separately. There's a cloud up there. Um, and now I've got to mix the colour for the sky. Mm -hmm. So for that I'm using a cobalt blue, with a, a tiny touch of phthalo green in it to take away the harshness of the blue. And I can start laying the colour on. See how nice and soft it, the, the sky is going on because of the, the water uh, being uh, already on the, on the paper. That angle that you've got there is really the optimum angle for you to Yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a very good to see. Uh, it's floating down towards the horizon a bit now. Yes. Down towards the horizon, of course, the sky gets lighter uh, because there's so much more air between you and the distance. So that gives you atmospheric perspective. Yes, of course. So what I'm doing now is dropping more colour into it uh, up near the zenith of the sky so that it can run gently down towards the horizon a bit. The sun is coming in from this angle to the left. I shall bring the colour of the sky, the darker colour of the sky, down further on that on the far side. And so I'm introducing a little bit more of the phthalo towards the bottom because the sky does tend to get yellower lower down and that is a touch of yellow comes in with the atmosphere there. And of course, if it's a murky atmosphere like you get in some Chinese cities, of course, you everything goes very yellow. Now, I need to make a colour of the cloud itself. And for that, I'll use a, just a little bit of burnt sienna in with the, the blue. What type of brush are you using there, Don? Uh, this one happens to be a, uh, uh, one of the most expensive brushes. There you go. But um, it's not really the best brush to use, so I'll change. Because it was too fussy. Ooh, too much blue there, but this is what happens. You have a bit of fun that uh, things change a bit. And that blue won't do any harm there. Because what I can do is pick it up. Run it, drop a little bit of, of burnt sienna into that, perhaps. And the piece that you've got in front of you of the Durham Cathedral is where yes. we're, we're going and we're that, that, that's, that's my finished work and what I'm doing is uh, really trying to show you the step-by-step -step process that yes. I went through in order to arrive at that. Yeah. You've also got a picture here that called Anno Vianos in Crete. Yes, yes. And it, did you go there because of... Oh the, yes, uh, my father was killed in Crete yes. in World War II. Yes. Um, and so several times we've been there at uh, various commemorations of the battle for Crete. Mm -hmm. uh, New Zealanders and some Australians too were, were caught up in that. Um, and a few Brits 
as well. Yes. Uh, so it's been a very moving experience to go there. I, I was, uh, met some wonderful people there. Uh, and of course you get a tremendous welcome. Now the next stage uh, is to getting some of the warmer washes uh, down into the trees. For that I'll go into a good basic yellow, it's a, it's a kind of middle yellow. And with a touch of red in it as well perhaps, not too much. I'll then start to lay in some of this main colour in the, the, in the trees. Making allowance for one or two trees which are a bit redder. You've got a number of um, pictures that you've done on your travels through Europe. There's another one here called Clifton in Connemara County in Ireland. Oh yes. As you're looking across the town and the whitewashed house. That was an interesting one because I was uh, caught out in the rain there. The original painting for that yes. was done on the spot um, and Every now and again a rain cloud, a rain, <laughs> a rain storm would come through. It's great fun, it, it, it tests you. It's a great way of working. Yeah. It gives you something much more spontaneous sometimes than um, a studio painting. Yeah. Even, uh, there's a lot of the harbours over there. You've got one called Clovelly Harbour in the UK, but there's so much character and atmosphere in those places. Clovelly is a very special place yeah. indeed. I did some uh, sketching on the spot there again too and another one called Crail from uh, Fifthshire in Scotland and the beautiful reflections that you've been able to put into the water is, is oh, just it's, wonderful. It, it's, uh, Crail was a, a great town. I did a, a small sketch on the spot there and um, that was, uh, it was it, it's a mighty painting on the spot because people come and uh, on the whole in Europe they let you uh, leave you alone, but mm. sometimes in Christchurch, uh, in the past anyway, when you painted on the spot, mm -hmm. people would say, oh, my grandson can do better perspective than that. <laughs> <laughs> in observing your work when I first saw it, I love the fact that you paint these really beautiful scenes of towns and places and cathedrals and the, the wonderful atmosphere that you get within them, and you've got one called Dunedin Icons. Oh yes. And you know you actually came from Dunedin yes. originally. Yes. Uh, and then worked on the trams down there. You actually not just paint the trams but you work on the trams as well as far as uh, restoring them. Uh, yes, well, I actually work on the trams here in Christchurch. Yeah. Uh, and we send them back once they've been restored. Uh, we sent several cable car trams back mm -hmm. to Dunedin. Mm. But we still keep some electric trams running around town here. Okay. Working on restoring them is a really interesting hobby I have um, and it enables me to get away from the uh, row from the studio and go out and work with some interesting people. Yes. Now one thing that is uh, remarkable about your work and stands out is the enormous detail and perspective that you put in there, not just drafting perspective but atmospheric perspective as well and I'm just putting up um, Dunedin's Civic Centre. Uh, I didn't know Dunedin was that cosmopolitan, to be honest with you, I haven't been down there before, mm. but it's uh, it's amazing. Plus the detail you've got in there is incredible. One of the main reasons I was interested in Durham when I was staying there was it reminded me very strongly of Dunedin, mm -hmm. and so of course does Edinburgh, yes. uh, because Dunedin is actually called the Edinburgh of the South. After the gold rushes, there was plenty of money floating around in Dunedin, so they were able to erect some great buildings there. Yeah, I mean even the uh, the picture, and you've actually taken the painting back to the 50s, it's called Historic 1950s Dunedin, but it's got the trams and the old cars and the town hall and it looks it looks amazing, it really does. Yes, well just another thing about my work is that I am interested in history Yes. Um, and I did do a book on the cable cars of Dunedin uh, too, uh, which has uh, uh, led to a group of people wanting to uh, reinstate a cable car line in Dunedin. Yes. Actually, the first steps towards that have actually now been taken. Some of the cable cars that we have restored at Ferrymead in Christchurch, the Tramway Historical Society, yes. have actually gone down to Dunedin uh, recently and they've been set up in a small museum that anyone can visit, uh, who visits, who goes to Dunedin, and people can sit in these old cable cars and imagine them still going up and down the steep hills in Dunedin. The Dunedin cable cars were just like the ones that uh, still run in San Francisco. Yes, there's a really, really great picture here. I've got to bring it up. It's called 
brush hour cable car done eat and it's obviously in the 50s right it's got the uh the wicker and the cane prams yeah. <laughs> attached and then the girls obviously with their little boater hats on and, and dressed up in the 1950s clothes it's great mm -hmm. <laughs> very cool yes yeah, so i've got to the stage now where i think i can move on to the next stage but i just wanted to show you uh in su summary uh some how some of those initial washes uh, go on We've moved on to the next piece there, Don, mm. and I'd like you to tell me a bit about pockets and spaces. The, the, the great painter Cezanne, mm -hmm. he had a particularly unusual style for his period, and he would organise his painting uh, to some degree by having what he called pockets in space. That is, when you look at a, even this one here, where you see there are darker areas because of the sun coming over this way, and striking the tops of the trees. There's a, there's a recess that goes into these darker areas. It does give you the illusion on a two-dimensional page that actually uh, you're going into something three-dimensional. That's my understanding anyway of partly what is meant by pockets in space. Yeah, you've got another piece here called Towards the Piazza de Toro in Seville. Oh yes. And a fantastic piece of work. Thank you. It's obviously the house of the bull. You know, once again, you, you could probably take that theory that we were just talking about and apply it to this as well. Yes, you can really. But it was a, such a wonderful view from the way up the top of a, a great tower in, um, in Seville, in Sevilla. Uh, that, that, that was a tremendous place to to go to. Though we never actually went into the bull ring because I don't really approve, approve of of bullfighting, but uh, but uh, it was such a, a wonderful view that I felt I had to paint it. Yes, even some of the other pieces that you painted while you were in Europe, the arches of Petigliana yeah. uh, in Tuscany. I think I got that right. Uh, yes, and it's an, actually it's an old aquifer, isn't it? Uh, there's an old aqueduct there, but it's not as old as the rest of the buildings. Uh, it was built in different stages over the years. It was founded, first of all, by the ancient Etruscans, mm -hmm. if you could believe that, way, way back pre-ancient Rome times. We've actually looked at a lot of your cityscapes and um, buildings, but you're also a very accomplished landscape artist as well. Thank um, you. The work's absolutely beautiful. and. We're just putting up the uh, Rakaia Gorge, New Zealand, yes, which is just beautiful, and then the Rakaia River and Mount Hutt, and uh, they're just wonderfully three-dimensional pieces that uh, you're using this quality that you call the atmospheric perspective yes. as well. There are some places in this world that I think are places which give you a great sense of awe and power and majesty. Mm. and they don't necessarily have to be Mount Everest uh, and so on, but they are places that somehow strike a chord with you. Yes. And th I was, uh, that place, um, the Rakaia Gorge, uh, struck a great uh, chord with me. Now, while we're sticking on our architectural and city and town themes, you've yes. got a piece called Toledo in Spain. It's got an old bridge across it but the colours in that and light and shade are just spectacular. Yes, so that was one of the most enjoyable oils, oils I think I've done. Alright Don, well it's pretty complicated and you've got a fair bit to do so we'll <laughs> just leave you alone for a little while. Thank you very much, I'll just do as, as much as I can for yeah, you. Thank you. Now just what I've been doing uh, is to start to draw attention to the depths of the street here. Uh, way down in those shadows, you can see some people haven't, still haven't painted in there walking up and down the street. But uh, uh, you, you need the depth of that street because it's going to lead your eye down round the corner there and uh, round behind those trees. And behind those trees, believe it or not, flowing is the river where between the trees and the cathedral, which is up on the hill. 
above the trees. But, and then I've also been working on uh, some of these house roofs here and some of the, 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 the sides of the buildings too. Step by step, just layering on bit by bit until the whole thing begins to look real. And uh, I just wanted to talk about the many shows that you've had over the years as well. You've been a number of exhibitions. Oh yes, yes. Um, yes. You know, going all the way back to, since to 87. But these days um, you actually exhibit with the Bryce Gallery. Yes. In Christchurch, which yes. is run by a good friend of ours, Min Kim. Yes. And also the, the Otago Art Society as well. Yes, I, uh, I'd like to send more work to them and they've, uh, they've shown a lot of my work in the past and I've won a couple of prizes there way back in the past. That's great. And what I'm going to do now is beginning to show some of the more details of these blobs which look like blobs and I want to turn them into trees. So to do that I'm doing some dry brushing uh, to some degree. I turn the, uh, the brush on its side and you begin to start to get up some of the the rhythm of the details. Uh, so just beginning to do that there, you can see that beginning to appear there. Uh, and as, it, as the tree goes down more towards the shadow, towards that, uh, uh, that pocket in space down there, uh, you need to, uh, need to build up the contrast between this building here, which is still not painted, um, and, and the shadow in the trees. There's also some shadows in that tree over there too. Well, I'm doing one tree on one side, I've got to do the tree on the other side. And then the, with the fall of the light coming from this way to that way, the fall of these shadows would go over like that as well. And a bit more shadow down here as well to agree with that and so on and begin to spread that whole effect across the whole painting but not going as much detail up there of course uh, as there is detail here. All right, Don, we have had a great day with you and you've shown us some amazing techniques with your wonderful ability and the piece that you were working towards, which is the one on the wall just behind us as well. Yeah. But thank you so much for having us in your studio today. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, Graham. We've had a fantastic time in New Zealand and in Christchurch. Wonderful country, amazing people. And Don, thank you so much for having us in your studio today. Thank you for coming, Graham. And if you would like to see more of uh, Don's work, you can go to his website at donmacara.net and see some of his fantastic work in there. He is, without a doubt, one of the elderly statesmen of the art world in New Zealand these days and an incredibly talented man and a very gracious man as well. One of, the, uh, one of our academic artists under any circumstances. Uh, also, we'd like to thank New Zealand artists. Uh, you go in and see Meg and Rob, they are fantastic supporters of Colour in Your Life and Visa V, we, we support them as well. We think they're just doing a fantastic job. And come and see us in Colour in Your Life at colourinyourlife.com.au and come in our social networking platforms, lots of stuff going on. But until we meet again guys from New Zealand and Christchurch, put from Don's some, Studio, yes, put, put some, some colour in, in your life. life. We'll see you guys, bye now, see ya. <laughs>